Hey guys! In this lesson, we're going to learn about what a normal force is. The name's a little funny, but we'll learn very soon why we call them that. So, let's get straight to it. Suppose we place a book on a table. We all know what happens, right? Once the book settles into position, nothing happens at all. That's pretty obvious, but I want to draw your attention to one of the things that doesn't happen Namely, falling down through the table toward the ground. Why doesn't that happen? After all, gravity is pulling the book downward, right? Well, clearly, the table exerts an upward force which prevents the book from falling downward. It counteracts the force of gravity by exerting a force on the book which is exactly enough to prevent it from moving downward. Now, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? There's a force acting downward, namely gravity, and there's a force that's exactly the same in magnitude, but in the opposite direction. They cancel out exactly, and the result is that the book doesn't move at all. Hmm, doesn't that sound like Newton's third law? That's the one that says, for every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. It seems like this would be the reason for why the forces cancel, but is it? Do you think that the force of gravity and the force of the table cancel each other out due to Newton's third law? Well, the answer is actually no. Newton's third law doesn't guarantee that gravity and the force of the table will cancel each other out. Earlier, we quoted a common paraphrase of Newton's third law by saying that for every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. But we should proceed more carefully. What does Newton's third law really say? It says that when one object exerts a force on a second object, the second object exerts an equal but opposite force on the first object. Once we look at this full statement of the third law, we notice that the two forces mentioned in the law actually act on two different objects. Alright, with that in mind, let's look again at our physical situation. There's a book lying on a table and two forces are acting on the book. First, gravity is pulling the book downward. And second, a force from the table is pushing it upward. These two forces may be opposite, but equal. However, there's one important fact that prevents Newton's third law from applying here. And what would that fact be? Well, the two forces are acting on the same object, namely the book but the pair of forces in Newton's third law act on two different objects. Therefore, Newton's third law is not a good explanation for why the book doesn't fall downward through the table. Okay then, what is the explanation? Actually, the true explanation is quite complicated and we would need to invoke advanced topics like quantum mechanics. At this point, we can only give you a very rough idea right now. Basically, there are two factors involved. The first one is that protons and electrons, which are two types of particles that make up everyday things like books and tables, are electrically charged. Therefore, they attract or repel each other sort of the same way magnets do. The other factor is that for the particles that make up everyday things, it's impossible to make two of them occupy exactly the same spot. Based on these two factors, physicists can give an explanation of why books don't fall through tables. It would be terrible, though, if we had to talk about particles and electric charges every time we have to perform a calculation. I mean, books lying on tables are a very common sight. Even though we can't fully understand why books don't fall through tables, can we at least describe what happens in terms of forces and such? Well, we certainly can. Looking at the book on a table again, we already know what happens in a general sense. No matter what force causes a book to press against a table, the table will exert a force to cancel it out. This cancelling force will be exactly enough to prevent the book from moving through the table. And that's basically all we need to know. Somehow, this complicated interaction between microscopic particles and material combine to produce this phenomenon. 
no matter how hard a book presses on a table, the table produces a force that's exactly enough to counteract it and prevent the book from passing through the table. Obviously, this isn't true if the book's so heavy that it will break the table, but we're going to ignore that possibility in this lesson. Awesome! Okay, so we've established that the table exerts a force on the book, and that it's not just a reaction force due to Newton's third law. Do we have a name for this upward force? Actually, if you look at the name of this lesson, you can probably already guess what the name of this force is. It's called the normal force. So we say that the force of gravity pulls the book downward, and the normal force prevents the book from moving through the table. Okay, but why is it called the normal force? What's so normal about it? Actually, when scientists came up with that name, they weren't thinking about the definition of normal as ordinary or average. They were using the word normal the same way mathematicians do, especially in geometry. In this context, the word normal actually means perpendicular. In other words, at a right angle. But at a right angle to what? Well, let's have a closer look at this diagram again. The normal force points directly upward, in other words, exactly at right angles to the surface of the table. In ordinary language, we'd say that the force is perpendicular to the table or at right angles to the table. A mathematician would say that too, but they might also say that the force vector is normal to the surface of the table. That's why we call this force the normal force. All right, now that we've seen normal forces in a particular example, it's a good time to give a proper definition of a normal force. We can define it like this. If an object exerts a force against a solid surface, the surface will exert a force on the object to prevent it from passing through the surface. This counteracting force is always perpendicular to the surface and is called the normal force. Awesome! Now let's test ourselves with an example. Let's say a car is driving along a road. It has a mass of 1,300 kilograms. Obviously, it's subject to gravity. The car is also accelerating to the right at a rate of three meters per second squared. We want to find the normal force that's acting on the car. What do you think the answer is for this question? Use the following information as reference. Well, the answer is 12,753 newtons upward. How can we find that out? Well, the first thing to do is determine where the normal force is coming from. In this case, the surface involved is the road, and the normal force prevents the car from sinking into the ground. So, it must point upward. Alright, once we've established that, our next step is to figure out how hard the car is pushing against the road. Actually, there is only one thing that's causing the car to push against the road, and that's gravity. But wait, what about the acceleration of the car? Well, the car is accelerating to the right, but that motion doesn't cause the car to press any harder on the road, nor does it make the car press any more gently on the road. So actually, the acceleration of the car is completely irrelevant to the question. Good! Now we need to find the force of gravity on the car. In order to do that, we need to use Newton's second law. It says that force is equal to mass times acceleration. Well, we were given the information to what the mass of the car is. It's 1,300 kilograms. And what about the acceleration? Well, that's just 9.81 meters per second squared in the downward direction. We know that because the acceleration due to gravity near the Earth's surface is always that value. So once we plug those values into our formula and compute, we find that the gravitational force on the car is 12,753 newtons downward. Okay, great! And we already know that gravity is the only force that might push the car into the ground. So that's the only force that the road needs to be counteracted. But what will the normal force need to be to cancel out the gravitational force? Simple. 
it just needs to be 12,753 newtons upward. And that is our final answer. Awesome! And that brings us to the end of this lesson on normal forces. Hopefully you've now got a better understanding of normal forces. So in this lesson, we looked only at cases where gravity is acting perpendicularly to the surface. Now in the next lesson, we'll look at the case of a ramp, where the surface is not perpendicular to gravity, but instead on a slant. So we hope to catch you in the next lesson, and until then, have a good one.